blessings 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 this is intention series part five my god and this is the month of grace you know this is the month of grace and um, we're grateful to god for this series this series is i'm telling you it's been a blessing not just to you but to me this is the month of grace for us you know we've been enjoying grace it's been testimonies back to back so if you're not part of the family you want to be a part of the family i promise you you know so it's prophet prince amal on every platform on tiktok youtube um facebook instagram prophet prince omar so go link up let's connect god bless you so watch this today's topic it's going to be overcoming wrong intention just before we get started just lift up your hands wherever you are as we pray father in the name of jesus we give you thanks for intention series part five we thank you for you keep blessing us you keep teaching us you keep lifting us you keep renewing our mind father we give you praise in the name of your son jesus we declare today's teaching open in the name of the father son and the holy spirit amen straight to the point so i just if you if you've not been following the series you're missing i i kid you not i kid you not overcoming wrong intention what is wrong intention it is simple wrong intentions are motivation that are sinful selfish or contrary to god's will they are intentions that are sinful and contrary to god it's selfish wrong intentions they are selfish and they are contrary to god's will it is not in accordance to god's will that is wrong intention and I'll just give us two um, um, Bible reference, you know, two scriptures, and those are going to be, um, I think, definitely they're going to be our reference. But I'll definitely, you know, um, state out more scriptural reference. So we'll, um, the first is Psalm one thirty-nine, verse twenty-three to twenty-four. In a way, in a way, it states, "Search me, O God, and know my heart." Some of you are like, why, why did God even call David a man that his hand was stained with blood, a man that is sinful? That um, do you understand? David did the craziest things, some of the craziest things, and yet God called that man a man after my heart. These are one of the secrets. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. I promise you. Before the end of today's series, before the end of today's teaching, ah, you're going to be transformed forever. Just stay tuned. All right. So, and the second scripture reference will be 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. You know, basically just talking about taking every thought captive. So now let's dive into the teachings of today. What are some common wrong intentions we struggle with? Now you're saying, okay, man of God, I know what wrong intention means. So man of God, uh, I'm struggling with certain things, uh, you know, and these are the things. And now because I've not seen you, you know, definitely like Anya, but I'll tell you just for the benefit of everybody watching. So what are some common, these are the ones I listed, that these are the common wrong intentions people struggle with. Number one, selfishness. I'm going to hit you so hard today, but it's for your good. Whom the Father love, he chastised it. Selfishness. What is selfishness? It simply means prioritizing personal interest over God's will and others' needs. That's other people's needs. You pro- it's, it, it, it's not about, you don't care what's God, you don't care about God. No, no, no. It, 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 it has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with you, 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 you. It has nothing to do with other people's needs, but yours. If it's not about you, then it's not prospering. You don't even care about the one who created you, God. If it's not, uh, I don't even care about God's intention. So selfishness is prioritizing personal interest 
over God's will and other people's needs. Number two, pride. Pride goes before a fall. There's this thing I always say. If your enemy fights you, you can run to God. If Satan fights you, you can run to God. But if God fights you, even the ground you walk upon will fight you. You you have nobody to run to. Watch this. And scripture states, it giveth more grace to the humble and he elbows the proud man. So the proud man is one is one person that God fights. Be careful not to be proud. Pride goes before a fall. I'm telling you, pride. Oh, uh, uh, let me. This is this will be another topic on its own. Number three, fear. What is fear? Allowing anxiety or doubts to drive decisions. When you allow anxiety or doubt to drive your decisions, then that's fear. Are you are you getting blessed? Number four, bitterness. I'm telling you, bitterness is one thing that eats people. According to a certain research, you know, one time like that, they said one major cause of cancer is bitterness. People that are bitter, they are prone to cancer. Bitterness. What is bitterness? It means holding onto resentment or unforgiveness. Resentment or unforgiveness. You know, offense. You, do you understand? Offense is one thing that destroys a man. Look at John the Baptist. The one who was one of the greatest. Oh, you need to go study John the Baptist and, and understand the caliber of man John the Baptist was. And just because of, uh, um, you know, offense. He said, go and ask him, is it the Messiah or we, we should wait for another Messiah? Because I don't understand this, you know. And his head was taken off just like a, just like a like an ordinary man, offense. Be careful. Don't let offense take over you. Don't let offense get the best of you. It's of the devil. Number five, greed. What is greed? Prioritizing material wealth or gain. The Bible says, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness. And all these things, the material gains you're pursuing will come. There are people that are greedy that even if they are, I'm telling you, it, 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 this this is funny, but it's not funny. Do you know there are people that they are chips. They might be eating chips or licking, you know, just eating something or snacking on something. If it falls to the ground, they will pick it up. That's how greedy some people are. They can't even give the earth certain things to eat. Oh, I dash you that dust. You eat it. They pick it. They pr- they'll pick it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're not, you're, you're, do you understand? You're munching on a nut or something or a chip and it falls down. You can't even just let go and move. You pick it. That is how greedy some people uh, are. Very greedy. So may the Lord deliver you from greed if you're watching me. I know some people are laughing right now because they've done that. <laughs> may the Lord help you in Jesus' name. Amen. So now you're saying, okay, prophet, thank you for um letting us know some some of the areas now i want to tell you should in case you don't know i want to tell you the consequences of wrong decisions for every effect there's a cause for every output there's an input the consequences of wrong intentions number one it damages relationship damaged relationships that's number one you find out people with wrong intentions, they can't keep good relationships. So you see, it's not everything that is spiritual. It's not everything that's of the devil. It's not everything that, oh, my father's house, spiritual problems. No, it's a lie. Wrong intentions can damage relationships. Promising relationships can be damaged as a reason of wrong intentions. If your intentions are not pure, if your intentions are wrong, it can damage relationships. People know when you're actually giving them fake smiles. If people can pick fake smiles, then people can also pick wrong intentions. So that is the consequences of wrong intentions. It damages, it destroys relationships. Ah, are, you, are you getting blessed already? Number two, 
spiritual stagnation. You see, certain ministers, they are stagnant spiritually. They don't pray like they used to pray. They don't commune. There's no coin on here no more. There's no fellowship no more with the Lord Jesus. You just find them stagnant. Their life is based on the things they, they used to do. The things they've done. I've once packed out stadium for the Lord Jesus. I've once done this. I've once in the sea. Can you do it now? Spiritual stagnation. Check your intention. If you're spiritually stagnant. If you're experiencing spiritual stagnation, check your intentions. Are they wrong? There's something wrong. Not every, see, you need to check. Why are you doing what you're doing? I keep hitting it. It must drive. Why are you doing what you're doing? You see, spiritual stagnation, wrong intentions. Hallelujah. Are we getting blessed? Are we getting blessed? My God. Rufa ha so revelatai sugedavenes. Thank you, Lord. Number three, missed opportunities. Your wrong intention can be a trap and it can be a tool the devil use to actually let you miss opportunities. Because when you have wrong intentions, you are blinded. Your sight to design, that sight to discern is closed. It's taken away from you because it is you, you've, you're, you're baptized with wrong intention. So you can't even see opportunities. You miss them. Number four, inner turmoil. You, you, within, there's no, if your intentions are, there's no, there's no peace. Number five, separation from God. If you're separated from God, what is, if you're separated from your source, how can you live? And you're wondering why you're experiencing spiritual stagnation. You're, you're wondering why things are not moving the way they used to. You're wondering why there's no promotion. You're wondering why relationships keep getting scattered. Ask yourself, wrong intention. Are my intentions right? It separates you. Once a person is separated from the source, what do you think? Nothing happens. Imagine taking a plant out of the soil. Give it a few days, it dies. Taking a fish out of the sea or the river. There's no means for survival. I pray for you. May you not be separated from your source in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I hear you. Are you getting blessed? If you're getting blessed, comment. I want to see your comments on here. My God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'll talk about how to overcome. Now, I've actually... I lighter the consequences and all that. And now let's move to how to overcome wrong intentions. How to overcome wrong intentions. I'll give you how to overcome wrong because we need to, this thing needs to die. It's a it's a it's a trap. It is a trap to limit you. It is a trap to do you understand? We need to we need to eradicate it by the spirit of the living God. These are proven and tested ways, you know, to overcome them. Number one, how to overcome wrong intentions acknowledge your wrong intentions you need to acknowledge you need to acknowledge them find them okay this these are wrong these these things that 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 wrong you acknowledge them and a bible scripture for that you can go to psalms you can go to psalms 5 and um, psalm 51 verse 3 to 4 number two confess and seek forgiveness you need to go before the lord humble yourself say father i confess then you seek for the forgiveness. It will be given unto you. The Bible scripture for that is 1 John 1 verse 9. Number three, turn away from sin. You need to turn away from sin. After asking for, don't go back. You can search that Proverbs 28 verse 13. Number four, seek God's guidance. Where can I go from your presence? Seek God's guidance. You can find that Psalm 119 verse 105. Number five, the fifth one. Cultivate humility. Cultivate humility. Humility is one key. Oh my God. You give up more grace to the humble. So cultivate humility. And now, to achieve all this, you need to do one thing. And one is that thing, renewing your mind. You need to renew your mind. If your mind is not renewed, you will struggle trying to achieve all these things. So I came up with ways that I've also tried and it's, you know, not just me, a lot of people, mighty people, mighty men doing great things like me. I'm, I'm getting mighty by the day, by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, renew our minds. Number one, 
How do you renew your mind? Number one, meditating on scriptures. And a Bible reference for this is Romans 12 2. You need to meditate. You need to meditate. Meditation won't just help your int- won't just help erase wrong intentions. It will make you prosperous. How do you make your way prosperous? What? Oh, I'm drifting. Huh? Let me just stick to this thing. These are deeper things I'm, I'm giving you free. These are deep things that will change your work with God forever. Meditation. You meditate on scriptures. Ah, huh? maybe. If you want me to teach on meditation, comment below. You will, your life, your life will be transformed. Your life will be transformed forever. All right. So meditate on scriptures. Now, number two, see God's perspective. God's perspective should be your go-to. God's perspective should be your go-to. You must see God's perspective. And the scripture reference for that is Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Number three, practice self-reflection. I'm going to give us some setting um, um, self-reflection exercises, just like I do, and I'll take us on some prayers. Okay, self-practice, self-reflection. Number four, surround yourself with positive influences. You can get that Proverbs thirteen twenty. Number five, pray for wisdom. Bible references James one five. When you ask according to gospel, it will be given. So pray for wisdom. Um, so now these are these are the ways you can achieve those I listed earlier. When your mind is renewed, a lot of things will be fixed without you stressing. I I am handing keys to you that is enough to tr- change the trajectory of your life forever, brothers and sisters. Do not joke with this. Do not joke with this. Now. Some of us might be struggling with wrong intentions. And you're asking, Prophet, how do I how do I change the wrong intentions with the right intentions? Easy. Number one, how do you replace wrong intentions with um I'm the right one? That's with godly ones to be precise. Not just right, godly intentions. Okay. Good. Number one, prioritize obedience to God. When God says to do this, you do that. Number two, seek to serve others. You must seek to serve others. It shouldn't be about you, 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 you. It doesn't lead nowhere. Seek to serve others. Number three, cultivate humility and gratitude. You must be, you must be, you you must be humble. You just have to be humble and you must be grateful. Be thankful. Gratitude is the way to attitude, okay? So number four, focus on eternal rewards. Let your gaze be on internal, um, eternal rewards. Rewards. Number five, practice selfless love. You must love the way Christ. Oh my God. Last sort of in the houses. May the Lord give you understanding. Now, these are the um I'll give you certain reflection exercise. Number one, ask yourself. You can write this down. What wrong intentions have I identified in my life? Number two, how have these intentions affected my relationships and spiritual growth? Number three, what steps will I take to repent and renew my mind? Number four, how can I replace wrong intentions with godly ones? Number five, what accountability measures will I put in place? Now, I gave you the secret already, so you have to go back and watch this video. Okay, now, I'll give you some prayer points that will help you on this journey. Now, I want you to pray after me. You said, Lord. Review areas of wrong intentions in my life. You have to pray with your heart. Say, Father, reveal unto me, reveal to me wrong, you know, wrong intentions. Review areas of wrong intentions in my life. Number two, you say, help me to repent and turn away from sin. You need the help of God to leave sin. Number three, you say, Father, renew my mind with your truth. What is the truth? God's word is the truth. Number four, you say, Father, give me wisdom to prioritize your will. Number five, you say, empower me to serve others with selfless love. Once you serve others, um, you know, scripture says, the, the, the greatest uh, uh, among you must be a servant. So you pray for the ability to serve selflessly. I pray for you. Father, I pray. Father, the grace, O oh God, to implement all this, let it be released now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. God bless you. Thank you for staying connected. I love you. Your brother, your friend, Prophet Prince Omar. Shalom.